Now, you've heard me say over and over again that the Clippers big man issue or situation was an issue at one point this year so far. Zubak has been playing really good, grabbing a lot of boards, getting nasty down there, banging in the paint, you know, being physical, you know, getting angry in the paint by his gameplay and just playing more of a intense type of style. And it could be due to the fact that he got the thirty three million dollar contract. It could be due to the fact that, you know, really just in general, this is how he's always should have been. And he's really started to develop into being more of a big man with a presence in the paint. Now, the reason why I say this, because I was looking at Clipperholics.com and there was some, you know, it really it was a shocking, you know, potential trade between the Clippers and the Warriors. And it was proposed in saying that the Clippers should go after one player that the Warriors have that they really looked at, or at least I thought they looked at as a future prospect of their future in regards to the organization and the direction they're going after the Splash Brothers and after Draymond and them retire. And what I'm talking about, or should I say the person I'm talking about, is James Wiseman. Now, it was proposed on this uh, site that the Clippers, you know, don't need to pass up this opportunity. And, you know, when I thought about it, 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 it kind of makes sense, but then again, you know, it kind of doesn't, you know what I'm saying, to a degree. Now, I will say, because James Wiseman is a second-round player, he came out with uh, big intentions for the Warriors, and there was a lot of high intentions for him to really play at a high level for this team and, you know, play at a high level for them in the future, even after the Splash Brothers and Draymond. And, you know, for the Warriors' sake, just as it said on the site that, you know, he's been back and forth in the G League, and I know that, and they just sent him to the G G League here, I'd say not, you know, I'd say like about a week ago or if that long. And it's like, you know, either he's injured or either he's going back and forth to the G League or something's always wrong with this guy. And that's the reason why I say on one side, it doesn't make no sense for the Clippers to take him or take uh, upon his uh, contract or anything like that, because if he's always injured or he's not good enough to be in the NBA because he keeps getting sent back to the G League so he can develop his skills and his game to get it up to a a certain point to catch up the speed to play a real NBA game consistently throughout a season, I would say that that's a, a very concerning sign to me. And especially, I would say that's a reason for the Clippers not to look his direction. So with that being said, I think the Clippers really need to kind of hold off on this if they're really actually looking into this. I didn't hear anything about this up until this point, but I wanted to bring it to you guys' attention because I thought it was really, you know, just, you know, came out of left field, like off the wall somewhere and you know it's really really kind of confusing to me because it's like why would the Warriors want to even exercise the option of giving up a futuristic player like him when they really made him one of the where they, they were trying to make him one of the focal points of their team and the fact that they need size in the paint still and the fact that they need all the depth they can have because this team is one and eight on the road and they can barely win a road game and Clay Thompson just found his rhythm I think last night or the other night he scored 41 points you know for the first time in a long time and hopefully you know he that that propels him to keep going forward and playing better and everything but still they still need size in the paint as well they can't go without having size in the paint they can't run everything through Draymond so it's like why would they want to let go of this guy and possibly even potentially trade him but in the flip side of that he has been 
on the market for trading the last two seasons or, or, or since last season, excuse me. And I didn't know that specifically, or at least I'm not going to say I didn't know that, but that's what I've been hearing anyway. So that's speculation. But either way, if he's been on the market possibly or potentially from last year to this year, it's almost as if the Warriors are... It's almost like they want him, but then again, they don't want him because they they want him as in like they want him if he develops into what they need him to. But if he doesn't, in which they kind of feel like he might not because they just sent him back to the G League here lately. Um, they're probably thinking more or less now we need to pull the trigger on this before. Well, why he has a little bit of value and, you know, um, maybe let this situation go. And I think that's very weird for the Warriors because usually when they draft guys or anything like that, we've known throughout their history since they've been a good team drafting guys they drafted guys with a purpose and they have um the purpose usually works out to its full effect like they did with jordan Poole. they they got jordan Poole. you know he was on the bench you know and um he got his opportunity of course when clay was hurt and uh i think steph was hurt a little bit you know back and forth too at the time um here and there and um that's when he really had time to shine him with toscano anderson and in in, on the team along with kaminga and uh gary payton the second when they had him before he got before he left and went to Portland um, they had time to shine because of the Warriors injury issues and everything they were going through a couple seasons ago so it actually worked out for the good but I guess the James Wiseman situation really has been a setback for them because they don't see any you know uh, potential in him like they actually thought he would be so maybe that's the reason why he's potentially being put out there as a trade prospect for them and i've you know based upon what i read in the report here um as i told you uh the clippers are one of the teams that are interested now me personally i think zubak is playing good enough and i think he's you know playing good enough for what the clippers need at the moment if i were the clippers personally if i would still i would rather go after miles turner of course than james wiseman because as i said james wiseman is either he's either he's unhealthy or his game is not developing the reason why the Warriors keep sending him to the G League and and I can tell you this Steve Kerr seems like you know I don't know him personally but he seems like one of those coaches that has patience a little bit or at least at times you know enough to where he'll let a player develop and get him acclimated into his system and his culture to where he can be an asset but apparently James Wiseman just isn't cutting it and if that's the case then I can see if, if that is the case I can see why they might want to you know explore other options instead of James Wiseman the only thing with the Clippers I would say is why would you go after a guy who's injury prone and who can't get his game up to speed and he keeps getting sent to the G League he's not going to do much for you especially when you're trying to win a championship this year you're not going into this season trying to make the first or second round and that's a success for your team no, you're trying to win a championship and you're projected to win a championship. So you can't have any lapses. And to me, James Wiseman could be looked at as a lapse if he's not performing up to the level he should be. And I can tell you, if if, if he can't get along with the Warriors staff and, and, and develop in that type of environment where it's easy going, you got two of the best shooters of all time. You got a great passer and floor general at times in Draymond Green, and he could play good defense. And the team has got another star player potentially in. Jordan Poole who can come down there and drop 30 at any time with a young Kaminga who can come down there banging the boards banging the paint with you know um you know James Wiseman and you know get extra rebounds and he looks like a potential good um you know player in the future possibly for the Warriors at times as well if you can't survive or play well in that culture I don't really know how he's going to translate over to the Clippers culture and play well even though I know Ty Lue and the Clippers you know Ty Lue can develop players and get them better and he knows how to get the best out of players as well but at the same time Steve Kerr does too honestly I mean Steve Kerr has won more championships than uh Ty Lue so I mean if, if Steve Kerr can't get the best out of you I don't know how Ty Lue I don't know how Ty Lue can so it's like to me it's kind of like a confusing type situation me personally if I were the Clippers I would not look this direction I would just continue on what you have with Zubak Moses Brown and Diabate and run everything through them in the center position and don't worry about James Wiseman because if they got problems with him they might sell you a lemon in him and he might become a problem for your organization so it's like don't take nobody else's problems just deal with your own and maybe keep that or you know as some people might believe you know go after uh, Miles Turner if you're able to get him and you know go with that situation and then on top of that you know what I'm saying 
As I said, the Clippers are trying to win a championship. They don't need no hiccups or no setbacks, no more than what they already have. So, I mean, then, you know, with that being said, I just don't really see any point in really going after James Wiseman. And there again, to even put the icing on the cake, who are you going to give up? To get a James Wiseman, who on the Clippers is really, or who on the Clippers is is would you give for James Wiseman, a guy who's in the G League right now, who's not playing that well, who can't fit in a culture like the Warriors, which is one of the easiest cultures to fit in. I guess maybe up until this year, until Draymond, you know, punched the hell out of uh, Jordan Poole. But either way, the culture's always been good up until this year. But if he can't, he's been in the culture for the last two or three years. So I mean, if he can't survive in that culture and play up to speed the where he the way he should then i don't think the clippers should waste time i really don't i don't think they should waste time on him but you know it's not my call to make it's not my call to judge it or anything like that but from what i see from this distance i don't really know how it's really really you know gonna make the clippers better i mean you have more depth you have more size in the paint with him but when does he play and when he does play how effective is he these are the questions you gotta ask yourself so to me if you got all those questions i wouldn't even go after it i would look elsewhere or keep what you have and try to build on that and try to win a championship that way. But hey, it's my take on everything. Leave any comments in the comment section. Check my other videos if you have it. Also, hit the like, also like, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you haven't as well. And hey, till next time.